Welcome back to a very special Obscure Gaming. Why is it special, you may be asking? Well, that's because it's the 11th video in this series. Normally, people think that the 10th video might be the special video, but that's, that's just not true at all, especially when you completely forgot that you already did the 10th video last time. So fuck 10, we have 11, that's two ones, that's double first. And to celebrate, I have an obscure game to talk about. I really went out of my way to change things up for this special occasion. Now I'm sure you guys remember Pokemon Stadium for the N64, and that's right, I said Pokemon instead of Pokemon. I hope you're fucking happy. Granted, I'm still going to occasionally say Pokemon to piss some people off, but I'm sure you remember the game. It was awesome. Bringing your Pokemon into 3D to battle in 3D. It was one of my personal favorites for the platform, and the footage you're looking at isn't it. It's Pokemon Stadium 2. And this is why you don't lend out games, because you're never going to get them back. So, to whoever has my copy of Pokemon Stadium with my level 100 Mew stored in Professor Oak's lab, I hope you die. Also, if before dying you could return that game to me, that'd be cool, because I want that Mew back, because I can't get another one. Little did I know, though, while caught up in this stadium fever, that there was a bootleg Pokemon Stadium for the Super Nintendo from China. And to my surprise, it's pretty good, which is truly surprising because after experiencing some of China's other bootleg offerings, I just assumed that they produced shit on a daily basis. So, good job on this one, I guess. I mean, you still ripped it off from Nintendo, but fuck, it's competent. So today on Obscure Gaming, I'll be talking about Pokemon Stadium for the Super Nintendo. It's really weird to not say Pokemon anymore. It's sad. Now, the story to Pokemon Stadium is completely non-existent. So I'm going to have to make up the story as I go along. The title screen says Arcade Moe as opposed to Arcade Mode. So it thinks it's cute. And Jigglypuff is in the game and obviously she thinks she's cute. So she's holding a tournament to kill all other Pokemon so that none may stand to oppose her. She also made everyone legally change their name. And she's a bitch who draws on your face when you fall asleep. So it's up to you. Insert name here to stop her artistic intentions and get the legal documentation to change your name back to something that's less stupid than Moo. All in all, I feel it's safe to say that it's the greatest plot that video games have ever seen. Now mail me my Oscar and Jigglypuff's head on a platter as we move on to the gameplay. Now Pokemon Stadium for the Super Nintendo actually shares similarities to Pokemon Stadium on the N64, as in, there are Pokemon to choose from, you choose one, and engage in battles while choosing one of four attacks. Though that aside, battles take place in a different manner. But we can't talk about battles just yet, as we need to see who's competing in this stadium of the Pokemons. And as you can see, all of the classics are here. We have Spia, Dogus, Lizad, Rive, Kames, Pullen, we got Pikag, Thund, Hudin, Genga, or Genja, depending on where you're from, Dead Gut, and finally, Moo. <sighs> Some may say, well, wait just a second here, Yuri of Wind. Some of these names sound like they're wrong. And yeah, they are. They're all wrong. Mostly. See, most of the names are actually just misspelled versions of the Japanese Pokemon names. They're still wrong, though. And I'm perplexed as to how anyone could misspell Mewtwo as Moo. Lazy bastards and you're spelling with the two letters and the M and the U, but these are our competitors! Yay! Okay, now we can talk about the battle. So you choose a character. I picked Moo because I figured he'd be top tier or some shit. And you fight your opponent through a series of what I'm going to call turn-based battles. As I said earlier, it shares similarities to Pokemon Stadium. You have HP. You have four attacks to choose from. And the person who dies first loses or wins, depending on your outlook in life. Really, all that's missing is that announcer would just yell random shit when you hit buttons. Oh fuck, that was a critical hit! Anyone else see that? No? Okay. Well, I'll be right here, wherever the hell they stuck me in the part of the stadium if you need me. If this game had that guy, I would just end the video right now and tell you to go track it down and play it, because it'd be the best game ever, but he's not in here, so I'm going to have to deduct points, even though I don't rate these. Way to go, guys. 
The way in which the combat differs from Pokemon Stadium is that in order to even attack, you need to hold down, which will charge a meter at the bottom of the screen, and the amount of meter you have will determine which attacks you can use. So a little meter will net you a light attack, and all of it will net you a really strong attack. These attacks themselves are nothing too specific to Pokemon, so there's no tackle or psychic, but that's okay because this game has even better moves. Moves like Hypnosi Genesis, which is obviously the best move in the entire game. Look how long and stupid its name is. It has to be good. There's no limit to the amount of times you can do moves. You just keep holding down and keep doing moves, which much like Pokemon Stadium, it's fun, but in a really, this is going to get boring really fast kind of way. Also, I thought you had to mash down to charge the meter initially, so the first time I played this, my thumb really hurt. So I'm going to have to deduct some more points just to cover any potential medical expenses. Aside from attack, there's also defending and evading. When your opponent goes on the offensive, you're given the option of either defending or trying to evade the incoming attack. To evade, you just have to hit the middle of this meter thing with the moving thingy. It's nothing too complex, and this is about as far as the gameplay goes when it comes to depth and needed skill. The game doesn't take any stats into mind or elemental weaknesses, so it doesn't even seem to matter which Pokémon you use. In a way, the only factor that seems to play a role here is luck, like when the opponent dodges your attack four times in a row and slides back and forth, grinning like a complete asshole. Which, much like actual Pokémon Stadium, when you go to do a move and you're thinking, Whoa, well, gee whiz, if I can only do Thunder ten times, I hope it doesn't miss. Oh shit, it missed, and now the announcer is telling me about it because I'm fucking blind apparently, and now I want to walk across the field and kill the Pokémon and their trainer and steal their money and leave. I was such a whimsical and happy child. But that's the gameplay, and you know what? It's not broken. It actually works. I didn't fall through a platform or get shot by a million projectiles. It did freeze on me once, but I've experienced worse. Plus, it's fun to play in a kind of boring way, but that's a huge accomplishment by bootleg standards. So hats off to the guy who didn't completely fuck this game up. You're doing an adequate, okay job, kinda. Keep it up as we move on to the presentation. Now, Pokemon Stadium looks good. I know, I'm surprised too. I mean, I get the impression someone actually spent time with this. I never get that impression. The Pokemon are all drawn nicely enough and they animate decently. They're a little bouncy, but whatever. They have animations for their attacks, attacks like Hypnocygenesis and for their getting hit and dying poses. Again, this is a huge accomplishment by bootleg standards. Someone give these people a Grammy! And yeah, I know, a Grammy really wouldn't apply here. I don't really care. Give them one. The worst thing I can say about the Pokemon themselves is that they occasionally look kind of derpy, but otherwise they look alright. The backgrounds, on the other hand, are... there. They're not bad, but they're not great either. It's like, hey guys, snow. Okay, now, forest. Mountains! Not the most exciting things to look at, but, you know, all in all, the game looks good. I didn't fall through a plat- if I don't- if I'm not falling through a platform, then the game looks fucking amazing. On the sound side of things, it's really nothing special. The sound effects are all generic. Well, this is the noise we think that thunder makes! Also, the Pokémon don't do their cries or make any noise at all outside of their I'm hitting you, and now I'm getting hit noises. And the music is unfitting and it loops. I'll go ahead and play some of it. Now you may have thought it sounded okay, and yeah, it's not ear-bleedingly bad or anything like that, but it just loops again and again, and it just doesn't seem to go with what's happening on the screen. Oh, and it's worth mentioning that sometimes the music just won't play at all, so the more you know. Also, I think this music is from a bootleg Tekken game for the Super Nintendo, and that game is fucking terrible. So I'll probably end up talking about it sometime. But that's Pokemon Stadium for the Super Nintendo. All in all, not bad. Which, I'm surprised. This is a functioning, fun, but kind of boring game with pretty good visuals and music that I just don't like. It's not super buggy, it didn't start a fire, I didn't die while playing it. This is a game I can actually recommend to people, so... If you like Pokemon and this looks like it's up your alley, give it a try. It's a decent game. I didn't die, I'm still here, I didn't fall through a platform. 
Oh no, this wasn't a bad day. This has been Obscure Gaming. Thanks for watching. Also, here comes an end slate. That was a great segue on my part, but hey guys, welcome back to End Slate Part 3, the third edition. As always, as in the other two times I did this, this is not scripted. I'm also a little sick and under-enthusiastic, so you'll have to excuse me. But, I know what my job is, and I know what I must do. I must end slate everyone. I'm gonna end slate the crap out of you. So, hey, you know, maybe you're looking at the screen right now, you're like, Ugh. You don't know what's going on. That's, that's okay, neither do I, and I never do. So I'm gonna explain what's going on. You may see at the top of the thing right there, there are two videos. They're going simultaneously, and they're just playing. They're just going along. And these right here, these are videos that I want to recommend to you guys. Because I think that's the purpose of an end slate. I don't actually know. I've, I've done these, if we're counting this three times now, I really don't know why people do these. I'm just trying to make a mockery of the entire thing. Whatever, call them mockery. I've been watching Whose Lines It Anyways. Isn't it great that I don't script these? Just go on and on about meaningless things. But Colin Mockery is very funny. I miss Who's Lines It Anyways. Anyways, uh, two videos. Uh, one, a Gaming Mysteries. What's it a Gaming Mysteries of? Even I don't know. Really, I don't. At the time of this, I really don't know which Gaming Mysteries I'm going to stick up there. But, oh, actually, yeah, I do know what the Gaming Mysteries of. It's a Gaming Mysteries of Star Fox 2 for the Super Nintendo. And I'm doing that. Because in March, it's Star Fox Month. So, you know, that's that's Star Fox. And then in March, you get more Star Fox for a month. A month of Star Fox. That's... How many times can I put Barrel Roll in a video? We're going to find out. Uh, the other video, now that, that's what I like to call a review. Now, I don't really do reviews very often. Granted, a lot of people think that everything I do is a review, and I guess technically it is, so I guess I do reviews all the time. But I never do normal reviews. Uh, but I said I would start doing those again, because there's like seven people who really want me to do those. So I'm going to start doing those again, eventually, kind of, at some point. And uh, I figured, you know, I better get people caught up, because they might not know what's going down with this whole review thing. Because no one's ever done those before. So you guys might not know what's going down. So that's that'll link to the last review I did, which is of Persona 4 Arena, which is a great fighting game, by the way. And I heard it's finally going to come out in the in Europe. I think is it out already, or is are we still waiting on that? Because I know it got delayed, and I don't know what they were like if they were polishing the discs. It was just taking a really long time, but it's finally coming out over there. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed the game. It it is good. I'm not sure if it was worth the wait. Like, I'm not sure if it's that good. Uh, well, it is good. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's coming out. Of, if, if it... Sorry, I went on a ramble. I'm going to end this now because I've said what I need to... Oh, wait. I can't end this. Oh, shit. Um, if I move my eyes downwards, I see some stuff. But, but let's ignore it. We're going to ignore it this time because you know what? It says... I don't, I don't even know what it says. It's something about subscribing. You know what? I want a hug. I want you to hug the video. That's all I want. That's all I want from you as a viewer. Now, I don't want you to hug your monitor or your computer. I want you to somehow figure out how to take the video and put it into a physical form. Like maybe a sibling, like hook them up, plug a USB into their head and and fuse the video within them, turning them in to a walking version of the video, and just give it a hug. That's what I want. That's what the video wants. What else does it have? Nothing! Uh, so yeah, hug my video. I'm gonna end the end slate now. Yep. Okay, bye. Oh, sh four minutes, wow. I suck at these. Okay, bye.